this is a really cool library that gives you almost every option for creating different kinds of carousels. And I know some people find carousels, uh, you know, controversial, but I think they're a great way of fitting a lot of data in a small space. And this one actually, it gives you a ton of options for how it looks and then how uh, things are displayed. You can see here, you can see a little piece of the other ones by, and it gives you this code snippets that shows you how to set them up here. So this is really cool. I mean, it's a really well uh, made site. This is really what I'm looking for because I tend to use Bootstrap for you know a lot of my websites. I just know it really well and it gives you a lot of nice components. But I've been wanting to do something like this and Bootstrap really doesn't do it where I have like multiple items in the same way. And this thing does things like it, it works with drag and drop. It has usability and accessibility features built in so you don't have to write that yourself. Uh, and um, it has all these different options for how you set it up. Uh, so here, you know, you just like one slide at a time versus doing a certain number of slides. And this one has a rewind. So when it gets to the end, it goes back to the beginning. Once it gets to this number nine and I hit forward, it actually rewinds. So you could have it loop forever. Uh, and, or you can have the item focused in the center like this. So really just about every, and like this pagination thing is pretty cool. Uh, just about any feature that I would want in a in a carousel, I see that this thing has its little bar right here that shows you the progress, which I think is also pretty cool. And you can also have vertical slides, which is awesome. So, uh, you know, Bootstrap doesn't have this level of component. Uh, the other thing that I like it, so let's hit get started here, is that you can install it for installation. You can go with either downloading the files, which you just click right here, or you can go with a CDN, which is what I'm going to use on this demo. Um, or you can also just run an NPM install command and install the library locally into your NPM project. And there's also uh, React, Vue, and Svelte versions. So that's pretty cool. I like that. I haven't really tried these, but it uh, looks like the latest version only supports Vue 3, so there's not a, like a Vue 2 option or you can use the old version for v2 i guess uh, there's a couple of different themes not a ton so if you take a look at these themes right here you can see that the default if you don't include a theme then you get these buttons uh, and um, it looks like this doesn't look bad i mean if you do use there's a sky blue theme just with a different set of colors and a different looking um, arrows now the interesting thing is you can also paste your own SVG code for your own arrows and easily modify what the library looks like if you don't want to use these arrows and you have a better set of arrows. Uh, there's also this other theme that has these little dashes, a little bit different kind of blue and these dashes, but everything is so crazy customizable. So for example, oh, also I wanted to say that there's also a video extension. And this is another thing that I wanted to do with my project. So uh, let's see, I wanted to actually have a carousel that has like some of the videos uh, and perhaps have like more than one video so that I can play it. Uh, and let's see. Uh, yeah, so you can see the versions of the alternative versions for Svelte, Vue, and Reactor down here. And there's also like all these ways of extending uh, things uh, with components. Uh, and there is, uh, so in addition to the themes, you have like a ton of options. So you could see like, all, here's a list of all the options that you have. So I created a little sort of demo and I'm really crazy because the one thing you're not supposed to do is try to sort of lie code anything. But if you want to try this uh, along with me or just try this a little bit later, I created this sort of uh, demo uh, code pen, not code pen, I created this swing in my github file so you have to just go to this url and then hit the period key and this will bring up github.dev with a sample of the slide that i am creating right here so it's a pretty simple uh little slideshow and uh i don't know why yeah so here's the images you can see that uh another thing is you can use the scroll bars and right now to like move the slides forward and backwards i can use the scroll bar which is another feature that i wanted uh, and you know, you can see how it's built right here. So this is kind of the finished version of the project. 
um, if you, I'm going to come right here and go back to my repository. There's also a start version, so it has everything, how I'm going to show you in a minute. Uh, and from here, again, whenever you're in any GitHub repo now, you can just hit the period key and it's going to load up um, a project, you know, that particular repo up as um, a web page. So this is kind of how it starts. This is just, if I were to show you the code, it's just going to be a list. So I, I have added Bootstrap in here to make it look decent, so, you know, and get the nice font and everything. Uh, but uh, it's essentially we start off with just a list of images, right? Nothing, no special classes here or anything like that. So if you go to that branch and just hit period, you can start off with this if you wanted to try it out. Now I am going to use this locally. So let's go ahead and switch over to Visual Studio Code. And the reason is I have some, looks like it's not coming up. So I have some tools that let me look at the differences between the things that I'm doing. So the layout here is also a little bit different. So um, let me show you how this works. Yeah, you can, yeah. Uh, so uh, Javier has a question. Can you customize the themes? This is the most customizable thing I have ever seen. It's about 30K total. Uh, so it, you know, I don't know if that's really tiny, uh, but it is so featureful that I think um, I really feel like this is what I'm going to add probably onto my site. So uh, you might see this in my Raybo.org website coming up soon. Um, yes, you can customize the themes totally. So let me hide this as well. So uh, to use this, uh, what you do is you start with a number of classes that you add to the project. So let's see, in addition to uh, this, let's see. So what we want to do is add a, so we have a div here with a class of BG secondary. So you start by adding a splice. So it's like a slide uh, with a P on it. Um, and this is going to break right now the layout. And then you start adding some other additional classes. So I'm going to say, I want to add a class of slide. And you have to do, remember is splide and two underscores, and then the classes look like this. So inside that, then you want to add another class of splide, two underscore, and then track. So the, the different pieces uh, correspond to different parts of the interface. And then you want to add a splide list, list underneath here. And then all your content would actually go in here. So this is kind of the, the most minimal version of um, the slideshow. So once I do that, I'm going to grab all this content here and put it in here, right? And then each one of these list items, you want to have another class. So so I'm going to do that. I'm just going to, I'm using uh, option alt or command option to do multi cursor down to select all these list items. And then I can just create a class for each of these and do splide two underscore and then slide. Uh, so now, let's see. Let's go ahead and save this. And we also need to add a class into the list of the UL. So class slide, oops, I'm sorry. Let's do slide, slide list actually so this div right here should have actually gone so we should have so this div actually this blind list should be gone should go in the um, should go in the unordered list and you know what let me make this smaller so I can see a little bit more of this I need to initialize it so um, but I'll do that in a second once I clean up my code oh, I just hate messy code so so we have essentially, uh, you know, a few classes and the way that these classes work, they, they're designed to do different things. So you can have um, headlines and text underneath each, each slide as well by adding some other classes uh, and you can do all kinds of things. So the, the slide is the main container of the whole thing. Um, there's also, uh, the, you know, this library is designed to have maybe more than one element showing at the same time. So there's a splide track element 
that wraps all of the element, elements that are currently being shown. So I showed you a different version of this, of this slideshow. Some had like multiple items in the same spot. So that's what the supply track element is for, containing multiple items if there are multiple items. And then there's the splide list, which is a wrapper for the list of slides and then an individual class for each one of these slides like this, right? And then once you do that, you need to initialize it. Now there's a couple of ways that you can initialize this thing, uh, but you can't, so you can actually use data attributes like you do in Bootstrap, but you can also create a separate JavaScript file. And just in case you're wondering, where am I loading all this stuff? So I'm using a tool called uh, Code Swing, which is a Visual Studio Code extension. And Code Swing has um, this file called CodeSwing.json. And this is where I'm doing all my imports. So you can see that I'm importing Bootstrap 5 here, and then as well as the slide library. So I'm using the CDNs here. You could load these locally if you want to. And then for styles, I'm doing, uh, I'm using Bootstrap as well as the minimal splide um, CSS and then one of the themes so that they look super nice. Uh, so that's Code Swing. It's an extension. You probably need to have that before you pull this up. So in addition to that, I'm going to, um, I need to initialize things. And like I said, you can use the data attributes if you want to, but you can also just use regular JavaScript. I find that the JavaScript is a little bit easier to read. So I'm going to do a const, const, <laughs> splide equals a new splide, right? So uh, to initialize it, what you need to do is do something like this, uh, and then you can pass along a configuration object afterwards. Uh, so let's see, const splide equals new splide, and then you pass along the class that you specified right here. Uh, and then in addition to that, you can pass, actually after that, you need to do a splide.mount method. And that will show the slideshow. You can see that it's showing up already over here. Look how nice it is. Like it really, because it noticed that my uh, width was too short to, to display all the dots, I just stacked them up on top of one another uh, and actually made this a little bit bigger. So now this whole thing is working pretty well. So that's all you have to do. Of course, you could do, like you could use this mount command, I think over here, and it would still work in the same way if you wanted to do it all at once. And then in addition to that, you can pass along a configuration file here. So you pass along an object. The object can have all types of things that you can add in there. So for example, we can say, I want to I want to set the type of slide. So the types are slide, which is the default. Uh, and then there's a fade. So now when you click on these, they fade instead of showing you um, you know, sliding. So the types are uh, slide here, which is what you saw earlier, right? And then there is a loop. I think the loop will, if you click on this, it'll go to the last one, right? If you're on the last one and you click to the right, it goes to the first one. Whereas if you just do slide, you I can't click on the left once. I'm already all the way to the beginning, right? So, and you can also do, of course, the fade. Then there's all kinds of um, additional um, sort of configuration things that you could do. So you could set like the sizes of things. Uh, and uh, let's do a per page item here. So you can say, okay, I wanna have five elements. I need to put a comma over here. So I wanna have five of them per page. So now you have exactly what I wanted before. And these are drag and droppable. So look, I can, I'm simulating that by just clicking and dragging on these. So drag and droppable pretty easily. And then it has these dots if you want to. You can hide those if you want. So let's do like, um, if you don't want to see the arrows, you could just say arrows false, right? You can say pagination false if you want to hide the pagination, the dots at the bottom, and then just use it as a slider that allows people to actually either, so the scroller is not on by default. So I'm gonna turn that on as well. So check this out. I just say, um, let's see, wheel, set that to true. So they, they do have defaults. So now if I put my, if I, I'm using my wheel to like slide through the different pages here, that's pretty cool. Um, let's see, you can also do an autoplay. 
out of play if you want them to out of play of course you set that to true and then um, it will I need a comma over here um, it'll I think it out of plays every five seconds or 5,000 milliseconds so if you want to you can also control that you could just say enter well and then whatever you want 1,000 is like a little bit much so every second it's gonna advance but maybe something like three seconds would be good there whatever you want to do um, you can also ask it to start at a different position so you can say a start at the fourth item instead of the first one uh, let's see and there is all kinds of other things that you can do the speed lets you adjust like the speed of the actual transition so I'm gonna make it really you're gonna see that when it slides it it's a little bit slower than it used to be let's make it really obnoxious like one full second for it to slide to the next see how it's sliding like a lot slower when it slides that that's what the speed would also do and um, you can also control let's go ahead and put the arrows back in so I think the arrows go on by default so there's the arrows and that is way too slow so I'll make that 500 okay so you can also say when you move um, you can say let's try per move and then um, we can say I want to move two items at a time instead of moving like the whole yeah I don't I'm all the way to the end so I think it's supposed to try to move maybe some of these other settings are killing it so or uh, per I think maybe it needs to be capitalized so per let's try that per move to save this and then let's try so now it's moving like two at a time instead of one at a time Thank <laughs> you.